Is James Wiseman ready for the bright lights at Chase Center? Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Switch Culture. I've been keeping a close eye on Wiseman's return to the floor, and what I'm about to say just might surprise you. This video is a follow-up to Wiseman's performance in his first game back, so before you dive into this video, if you haven't already, click the link that just appeared in the top right of your screen to go to the first video. Now that you're all caught up, let's get right to it. After casually dropping 18 and 6 in 21 minutes his first game back, Wiseman looked great. The biggest concern going into his first game was to ensure that he no longer had any negative effects of his injury and that he fully recovered from the arthroscopic surgery he had back in December. For a big man, leg injuries are typically devastating. Ask Boogie, but with youth on his side, the franchise still had high hopes for Wiseman. As I mentioned before, he wasn't expected to blast off to Mars his first game back, but his play was so convincing, I had to catch the second viewing to make sure what I saw was the real deal. With injury concerns abated after his first showing, I was expecting Wiseman to come into his second game with more of a bang. Like everyone else, those workout videos got me amped up for what we might see of him in an actual game, but in the first game we saw him seemingly take it easy. While some use it to criticize him, he surely looked like a player coming off an injury. AKA, that's what he was supposed to look like. What he did not look like, however, was a player that belonged in the G League. The second game was supposed to be more telling. With a few restrictions lifted due to a successful showing against the Kings, we got to see him suit up for the second time this year, and man it was every bit worth waiting for. After smashing the G League in his first and second appearances since injury almost a year ago, is James Wiseman ready for the bright lights at Chase Center? I'm convinced. Let's start out with the good stuff. So James in his second game back had 19 points, 14 rebounds, and 2 blocks in 20 minutes. To put it simply, he was unstoppable. He upped the level of aggression, and without a doubt, this is exactly what I was hoping to see in his second time out. Wiseman was cleared for takeoff. The only person that could stop Wiseman was Wiseman himself. With his size and mobility, he was able to get whatever he wanted. He could get his shots at the rim, or he could get it outside the perimeter. He showed improved footwork in getting to the basket, as well as a bit more explosiveness with getting up for rebounds and hammering it down. It's important to note that his points didn't come from the team running plays for him or from him finishing passes on lobs. While there were a couple of those, it was his active rebounding as well as putting the ball to the floor that allowed him to score 19 points. He wasn't afraid to put the ball down and rise up over his opponents to finish with authority. He also showed that he had the ability to make very accurate look ahead passes to his teammates, which is, while a small aspect, a very important one to his fit with his team and his overall development. To put it simply, he's an entire package. He showed us that he still is capable of taking shots from deep, although a banked in three doesn't exactly have the same kind of switch to it. He's a menacing presence in the paint as help defense and was reliably there to back up his teammates, sending shots well away and then running the break. This is a key aspect of what the Warriors are hoping James Wiseman will be bringing to Golden State for the rest of this season. With numbers like this, Wiseman was really unchallenged in the G League by opposing centers. He was clearly the best player on the floor and is no doubt worthy of being a top pick in the draft. For the not so good stuff, here are some of the things I noticed. I pointed some of these out in the first video, but others I didn't. You could tell his footwork was still coming along, and that he's working with the coach on trying to position himself among the defenders when he's trying to finish. Some instances worked out better than others, and in worst case scenarios, his defender was able to prevent him from scoring. While he did get 19 points, he could have had quite a bit more. He missed all three of his free throws, all of which would have counted for two points each, so we're looking at 25 points if he had hit those. If you recall, making free throws is a low spot for any Warriors player not named Poole, Steph, or Clay, so that's something that he'll have to work on. He also still has the nagging issue of struggling to catch certain passes. While he's finished enough attempts for it to not be as bad as it was last year, the microscope is going to be on that particular issue because of how glaring it was in his first season. It certainly seemed like he may have improved, but again, we'll need a larger sample size of data. He's still shaking off rust and it may be another few weeks before we really see how much improvement he's made. 
The next issues are regarding his screens and positioning. He does seem to be a bit casual setting the screen as his execution could use a bit of work. He's not properly lined up with the defender to ensure his teammate is able to get by and so at times they end up rejecting the screen without really having an advantage. When he does set a screen that the point guard uses, he tends to still get a bit crowded in the paint, with the end result being either a turnover or the ball has to get swung out to the corner. The last issue with Wiseman, which I don't consider to be a huge problem, is getting back on defense after a missed basket. I don't think it's a big issue because that has to do with a mix of motivation and stamina, both of which are understandable in a player in his second game back in the G League. Nothing that Draymond couldn't set straight. Overall, I think this has been a great showing for Wiseman. In both games, he appeared to be willing to make the right plays and that's another key factor for players that succeed in the Warriors franchise. He wasn't forcing the issue and his shot selection deserved to be praised. He likely come back with renewed enthusiasm on the floor for Golden State and that confidence that he showed should continue when he gets back in with the main squad. Now someone asked me a question the other day and I thought it was worthwhile so I think I'll get a bit more into that here. Someone wanted to know where James Wiseman fits into the Warriors scheme for the playoffs. This is a very interesting question for a number of reasons. Wiseman doesn't have anywhere near 82 NBA games under his belt. He still has a lot to learn at this level. With only 3 games at the college level and 36 at the NBA level, he's right where most players usually are at the start of their rookie year. Couple that with him having had a 1 year hiatus of not being able to actively play, you see where I'm going with this. Now, would it be fair of us to expect a rookie center who's just starting after a 1 year break to come in and guard the league's MVPs? Not even Magic Johnson had such a tall task when he came in the league in his first year. The good thing is that he won't have to. Wiseman is going to use his entire skill set, that's for sure, but he'll use it to fit within the scheme of the offense. When Kerr is using him in a lineup that has plenty of shooting, he will likely be mostly a post-up presence and lob threat. If this lineup is matched up against a good shooting team, then he'll of course help to stretch the floor with the goal being for the Warriors to have more spacing than the opposing team. If we're facing a team that doesn't have much shooting at the 5, then Wiseman might be paired up with Kaminga who loves to get downhill and can still defend the paint. This will give Wiseman the room to play outside the perimeter. This would be a very limited role and we'd see the same thing if coach decided to pair him with Looney. The Warriors will be very versatile at the 5 using anyone from Draymond, Kaminga, Porter Jr., Bielitsa to Looney and Wiseman in that spot. With this many options, Kirk can do whatever he wants to exploit matchups. That being said, his main focus would be as a backup to Kevon with minutes off the bench to reduce Looney's load and to provide a presence in the paint that the Warriors do not currently have to prevent Kevon from being eaten alive by taller and more mobile players that have a jumper. Let me know if you think he'll do more than that and what foreseeably he can do for the team that I didn't mention. Do you think his performance was favorable? Post your thoughts in the comments below as I enjoy reading your thoughts as much as I enjoy creating these videos. And thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish. Can't eat a shit cock. Word, I'm a player. The real player. I don't give a prayer, man. Fuck a naysayer. I block so hard, sweetie, get served. Call me Lonzo Ball, bitches get swerved.